We will now talk about methods. While all methods are functions in Python, not all functions are methods. There is a key difference between functions and methods. As we've seen, functions take objects as inputs or are passed an object. Methods, in contrast, act on objects. For example, the function type, which tells us what data type a variable is, requires an input of an object like the list prices, whereas the method sort is called on a list named prices. Let's take a closer look at using methods specific to list. To access methods of a list, you reference the list variable followed by a period, followed by the name of the method. Suppose you want to sort the elements and prices in ascending order. You would type prices, followed by a period, followed by the method name, that is sort, including the parentheses. There are many useful list methods. Let's learn a few more. You can add elements to a list using the append method. The append method adds a single element toward the end of a list. For example, let's append the string April to a list of months. To do this, you'll provide the string April to the list method append. Using append will always increase the length of a list by one. If you would like to add multiple elements to a list, you can use the extend method. Here we show how to add three elements to the list months. Unlike the append method, which increases the length of a list by one, the extend method increases the length by the number of elements that are provided to it. Let's learn about another list method called index. Index returns the index of a specific element. Here are two lists, months and prices, which describe the month and consumer price index for that month. Let's use the index method to find out the index of February. Using this method, identifies that February is at index 1. The corresponding price for February can now be accessed using this index. We can use list methods and functions to perform analyses in Python. Let's introduce two more functions in Python, min, which returns the smallest element of a list, and max, which returns the largest element in a list. To identify the month with the smallest consumer price index, you'd first use the min function on prices to identify the min price. Next, you can use the index method to identify the index location of the min price. Using this index location on months, you can now identify the month with the smallest consumer price index, which turns out to be February. Now that you've learned about functions and methods, let's practice using them.